Hello everyone, welcome to Wi-Fi Learn. Today let's see the topic under electrical circuit theory. The book I refer for this topic is Electrical Circuit Theory and Technology by John Bird. In most of the competitive exams like GATE, TRB, TNEB exams, problematic questions comes under the topic. The problems can be of network reduction, Kirchhoff voltage law and current law, theorems and many problems will come under this topic. Okay, let's move on to the topic. In this video, let's see some basic definitions and its units. First, let us see about SI unit. The basic SI units are of 7, length, mass, time, amount of substance, current, temperature and luminous intensity. Each have an unit. Length is measured in meter, mass is measured in kilogram, time is measured in seconds, amount of substance as a unit of mole and current is measured as an ampere, minus intensity measured in candela and the temperature is measured in Kelvin. So these are the basic 7 SI system of units and uh, next is derived units. Derived units as the name indicates the units are derived from the basic SI units. So we can have an example. Uh, Velocity, velocity has the derived units of meter per second since the de definition of rate of change of displacement per time. A unit of velocity is meter per second and acceleration, acceleration is a definition has rate of change of velocity that is meter square per second square, meter square per second square and there are terms like energy, work, power, force, these are comes under derived units only. Each have the units that are derived from the basic SI units. Okay, now let's see about force. Force is nothing but push or pull of an object. Force is nothing but a amount of push or pull applied on an object so that some work has been done. Assume this is an object. This is an assume this is an object. In this object, we can apply force in any direction. You can apply force in this direction, you can apply force in this direction, this or this. Any direction the force can be applied. Since force is a vector quantity, it has both magnitude and direction. Direction in the sense in which direction you are going to apply the force, either in this direction or in top wise or in bottom or in left side direction. Okay, The force has both magnitude and direction. Direction represent in which direction the force has been applied on the object. And magnitude. Magnitude represents how much amount of force you applied on an object. For example, if a force is 10 Newton, you are applying a force in this direction as 10 Newton and applying again a force of 10 Newton in this direction. So the object cannot move. The object will be in the place of rest position only. It can't move from the side or the side. Since both the position, the force has a magnitude of same, it has a balanced force in both the direction. Okay. The other terms represent the force are stretching and squeezing stretching and squeezing is also the terms that can represent force so force can be in any direction and the direction has to be mentioned to represent a force and the force is the vector quantity the direction and the magnitude of the force must be represent the direction represent in which direction the force has been has been applied and the magnitude represent the amount of force that has been applied in that direction Force can be represented by an equation of force is a product of mass into acceleration where 1 Newton of the force is defined as where 1 kilogram of a mass accelerated over 1 meter square per second square. The unit of the force is Newton. It is also a derived unit which has a unit of kilogram per kilogram meter square per second square where 1 Newton is defined as 1 kilogram of mass applied for 1 meter square per second square. Force is applied in an object that the object can be interacted with another object also. And there are different types of forces. The basic two types of forces are contact and non-contact forces. Contact force. A contact force is a force that act on a body either directly or through a medium. Examples of contact force are muscular force, frictional force and mechanical force. The examples of a muscular force is the weight lifter lifts the weight by using of his hands and its muscles. He lifts the weight against the gravitational force. And the frictional force is nothing but a force that acts between the 
frictions of a two body that is frictional force we can take an example of a skating board friction present between the road and the wheels present in the skating it has a frictional force non contact force is a force that acts through a space without any making direct contact with an object or a medium called as a non contact force and the non contact force are uh, having an examples of gravitational force and uh, magnetic force and electrostatic force these are the three types of non contact force weakest force is a gravitational force weakest force since if you throw a ball or a stone from top of your building it flows down very fastly this is due to the gravitational constant g of 9.8 meter per second square there are some effects of force if we apply force on an object consider this is an object the force can apply in, in all the direction the force can apply in any any directions if you are going to apply a force in this direction assume initially this object is at rest object is at rest at state of rest if you are applying the force at an object which is in the state of rest it can make an object to state of rest to state of motion it can make the object to move this is a first effect and consider an ob object that is moving already moving object it's moving and you are applying force in this direction force is applied in this direction it makes the object to reduce the speed it may stop the object also the force can make an object to accelerate the speed it can increase the speed and it can change the direction of the motion where the object has been moved it can suddenly change to left or it can be suddenly changed to right depending upon the force in which direction you are applying Got these are the some effects of force see one problem regarding the force see in this problem a mass of 5000 kg is accelerated to 2 meter square per second square what is the force needed the solution would be very easy we know that the equation of a force is mass into acceleration right the given mass is equal to 5000 kg if they are given in grams kindly change this to kilogram because 1 newton of force is nothing but 1 kg of mass accelerated over 1 meter per square per second square okay they are given already in kilogram keep it as it is so 5000 into 2 will get as 10 thousand newton force you have to mention the direction in which direction the force has been applied there is a problem they didn't give any direction so we can write as it is if you have given the direction particularly we have to mention the force in this direction or this direction as the force has been applied in this problem find the force acting in downward direction of mass m is equal to 200 grams in this problem they are not given the acceleration value we have to substitute the acceleration value since the force is acting in downward direction downward direction in the sense it is due to the gravitational force and the acceleration due to gravity g we all know this 9.81 meter square per second square and the mass given in 200 grams we have to convert that into a kilogram your mass would be changed to 0.2 0.2 kilogram force equation is force is equal to mass into acceleration m into a so mass is 0.2 and 9.81 will get the value as 1.962 newton now let's see the definition of work normally we use the terms like overworked and hard working person depends upon the effort that have been put by that person the actual definition of work is nothing but the force applied on an object so that it can move for a 1 meter displacement work is defined as a force applied on an object so that it can move a certain displacement it can move a certain distance so the expression of a work can be given as w is equal to force into displacement work is measured in joule it is also a derived unit we all know the force can be measured in newton and the displacement can be measured in meters newton meter the unit of work is newton meter another unit of work is force can also be represented as kilogram meter square per second square again it has a unit of meter for distance so this is also a unit of work assume this is an object you are going to apply a force in this direction force you are applying the force in this direction after the application of force definitely your object has to move in this direction so this is a 
displacement direction right the object has been displayed in this direction according to the work expression work is nothing but force into displacement and the angle between the force and the displacement here force is in this direction and your displacement is also in this direction then your angle would be zero right can be represented as f into d into cos theta where theta is the angle between force and the displacement in this example we have represented a force in this direction and the displacement in this direction your theta will be zero so work expression is f into d this assume this is an object you are applying a force in this direction and your object is not moving here an object is moving this side in displacement it cannot happen but assume that the displacement in this is right angle to the force that is it is in 90 degree with the force your theta value is 90 your work done will be 0 since cos 90 is 0 your work done is 0 if you apply a force in left hand side in this direction your displacement must be in this direction only but the object has been moved here by some other force some force has been applied on that object and taking that object in this way in up towards this direction so your work done would be zero so there are some factors that affects the work if you are applying a force on an object that is in state of rest and it does not move it is in the initial position only after applying the force the final position of an object is in initial position only it is not moving to any places so initially time. displacement would be zero at that time so your work done would be zero if your displacement is zero definitely your work done would be zero if you are not applying a force on an object definitely it won't do any work right and if your force is zero obviously your work done will also be zero consider this is an object you are applying force here at 20 newton and you are applying force in right direction also 20 newton here in this object the force is in balanced condition you are applying force in this direction and also in right side direction it has another balanced force condition your net force would be equal to zero at that time there is no work done and the object is not being displaced from initial position to final position finally your work done would be zero these are the some facts that affect the work there are some work done against the gravity example a weight lifter lifting the weight against the gravity weight lifter lifts a weight of 200 pounds against the gravity to the distance level of 0.5 meter above the ground level he is doing a work against the gravitational work these are the basic definitions work and force let's see some more basic definition in next video thank you